fucking up so much. I don't know how we're going to do a fucking hour of this. Can anyone even see my face? No, you see how everyone's doing the mezzo mezzo. What fresh air. In my microclimate helmet. The easiest way to have fresh air at a convention. Just a quick reminder for all microclimate customers. We got any microclimate heads in the house tonight? Well, we want to thank the kind folks at Micro Climate for sending us four helmets. And we want to condemn Patrick Cotner for forgetting to charge his helmet. <laughs> he has a non-functioning battery-less helmet. He was too busy. Say it with me, folks. Napping in the snack. Really, no one up. <laughs> Well, today, of course, we, we appreciate you all coming out to support this panel. You had a lot of bigger options, let's say. <laughs> of course, today, right now, the Hammerstein Ballroom, I believe, Jason Reitman and the cast of Ghostbusters Afterlife is giving their audience a sneak peek at what's to come. But we here at the George Lucas Talk Show thought it was a good moment to look back on the fifth anniversary of Ghostbusters Answer the call! A nice comedy movie that broke culture for some reason. <laughs> anyway, I'm Watto, I'm your, uh, I don't know, moderator slash warm-up comic slash microclimate ambassador <laughs> slash sidekick slash flying space troop. And I'd like to welcome the cast of the George Lucas talk show. First of all, he's a real rat, Patrick Parker. Don't give me that look. Don't talk to him. don't know why he said that he's fucking rat. What? Do the crawl? Okay, Patrick said do the crawl. Next, I'd like to introduce our second favorite cast member, Crawley. Retired filmmaker George Lucas. Something's 
I was just going there, George. <laughs> I really don't think anyone's able to hear us unless we do this, George. Yeah, you got to put it inside like I'm doing. You have to stick the microphone on your head. James, how are you doing? Can people hear you? Um, yeah, hey. <laughs> I find it hilarious, the one guy that no one came to see is perfectly visible. <laughs> James, you have to speak louder. Some of us are wearing microclimate helmets. <laughs> now, George, before we get started, I want Zach to is talking. Zach, put the mic in your helmet. Wait, did you not hear that at all? I didn't hear at the bottom of the helmet. Did you not hear what I was saying at all? No. I was so loud in my head. No, no, no one could hear you. I was so loud in here. I was saying, I can't see even in this. The glare is making it so I'm, it's like I look out into the sun. Now I don't, I don't want to tell us to take them off, but I feel like maybe we should. No, absolutely not. <laughs> That's not the George Lucas talk show spirit. George, how are you doing? I have panic attack in this room. <laughs> George, are you still having a panic attack or do we think we're on the other side of it? It's not the fault of the helmets. I want to make that clear. The great product. A, they're not designed for panic attacks. That's not why you're wearing them. You didn't say that on the box. Yes. Uh, right now, I I have an option to. Right now, I'm listening using this iPad as a microphone to my earpods. But there's a lot of echo, so it's just a different kind of. Um, I think my battery is running out. I charged it. I uh, give it. Is that what the beeping is every few seconds? <laughs> I don't know. That also might be a side effect of the panic attack. Sometimes I hear beeping, but I'm deep. I wish I knew what you said. It was funny. <laughs> George, before we get started, can I just say, I want, guys, if you're watching this and you want to film some of it, Film some and then email to the George Lucas Talk Show at gmail.com and I'm gonna edit it all together into one video because I want people to see this from, you know, 50, 75 different angles. <laughs> uh, Patrick already trying to find ways to pass his responsibilities on to the audience. Also, Grogu's and Grandma's, a late breaking guest, Pikachu is in the house. Up three steps. <laughs> Even, uh, don't stand there, Pikachu. <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we are gathered here to celebrate the multiverse of the ghost hunters. <laughs> there are, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are three official universes. Three base realities for Ghostbusters. There is the original motion picture reality. Yes, check. 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 Then there are the real Ghostbusters, the animated TV show that couldn't use the same characters, right? Yes, but it's all continuity. Check. Yes, but no one got angry when that version said we're the real Ghostbusters. Yep. Right? Yep. Even though you would think that would be infuriating to fans of the original movie. Some, for some reason, what was the what was the X factor? What was the X factor that made people not angry at the real Ghostbusters, and yet they were angry with the 2016 Ghostbusters answering the call? Maybe it was a Y factor. Maybe that yes. was <laughs> fucking babies. Yeah. But we we want to encourage, in addition to celebrating the fifth anniversary of uh, Ghostbusters answering the call, bling, bling, we also. We want to encourage 
a new public domain franchise. Which, this means it belongs to everyone. Anyone can make of the host of toaster, movie, comic book, video game, novel. Anything. It's Anything. open source. Anything. Board games. <laughs> Flip flops. That's <laughs> right. So I want, we want to go out because I think everyone's excited about telling stories about people on the hunt for the undead, the spirits of the undead. We love it. Right? Just don't mention Buskin. Never. Never Buskin. No. That's them. They own that. They own Buskin. They own that one part. But they don't own, own Tuscan. They don't. I believe in the 1984 movie, at one point, uh, Peter Venkman, uh, Dr. Peter Venkman, says this chick is toast. Yes. But that, that's different. Yeah. That's different. Right. He's saying she already is toast. He's making a prediction. He's not saying he's going to toast her necessarily. No. Nope. That's the only, that our lawyers looked at it. They gave it a good scrub. And they said, no, toasters is fair game. You can toast ghosts. Right? Yep, correct check. Right. So that's, that's old business out of the way. Maybe we should talk to our guests. Yes. Are you saying toasting? Toasting, toasting, like bread. Toasting, yes. Yeah, toasting. I couldn't, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> toasting. Now, no, I got you now. Hey, George, you got it, right? Yeah. Hey, what was it like working in a Marvel movie? Zach, give it to me. It was fun, George. Can anyone else hear you? No, put the mic in George's throat. <laughs> Like working on the Marvel movies. Did you have fun? Yeah, I had fun. <laughs> that was a good question, George. Now, we look like astronauts. Yes. Yeah. Almost like we're part of some sort of an organization, a recreational, a, a club perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh. An astronomy club. Oh! Oh! If you were an astronomy club, you wouldn't have a, you'd be <laughs> grounded to the earth with no need to have a, you know. Not if the club expanded to all reaches of the universe. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess if you were like a, in a, an astronautical astronomy club, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't like your implication that a member of an astronomy club can never make it up to space. <laughs> uh, but, okay. All right, I'm not saying that. It, it sounds like you said it verbatim. <laughs> Luckily, we I'm have just saying, 35 I'm just, people I'm just filming, saying, James. So in, the community, in, the in the community, you know, astronomy is considered different than when you, you know, you, when you go through the training of becoming an astronaut and then going into space. And That's a very Earth-centered perspective. Wow. <laughs> what if you're in an astronomy club from another planet? I don't know what it's like on other planets. You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't say that. I don't know. To anybody from other planets who's hearing this, I don't know what, what astronomy clubs on other planets are like. Pikachu, what do you think? Pikachu. 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 It'd be really sad if that didn't happen. Yeah. Although, is that what you want, Pikachu? Do you want to just live a normal life? No. 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 What size Pokeball would you need? <laughs> so large. I think Pikachu is trying to mine how big the ball would be. <laughs> it's impossible to mine something that much bigger than yourself. <laughs> Now, George, we have we have some videos that I want to show. Let's rack up the first video. Yeah, so we got some videos from people who were involved in Ghostbusters Answer the Call. They wanted to say hi. They wanted to say hi. Let's play uh, that, that second video. Hi, this is Chris Gethard, a.k.a. the king of the extended cut. Uh, if you know my work, you know that I have often filmed parts in movies. I have often been cut out. And then occasionally I am added back in for the extended cut release. Uh, which sometimes is in theaters and usually is on DVD. It's a hell of a career I've built for myself, and congrats to the George Lucas talk show for getting someone of, of my caliber. Um, Ghostbusters, what a ride. Loved being a part of it. Fun time.
Great set. Boston. Hell of a town. Here's the thing. This is the only situation I've ever been in in, in my career where there was a stunt coordinator because um, Kristen Wiig's character throws a punch at me. So they had a whole thing where they laid out mats and they said, we're gonna go through it and how it goes and how you throw the punch and this and that. And I said to myself, a fake punch? I, I guess, yeah, no, and I'm not trying to disparage a stunt coordinator. Everybody get your job. I'm not trying to cost anybody money, but this feels silly. They taught us how to do the punch and it seemed very simple. And then when they called action on, um, Either the first or second take, take um, Kristen Wiig, who is lovely, and who I don't think I had offended in any way, uh, messed up, and in the moment, actually punched me in the face. They should put you back in therapy, you freak. Oh, oh my god, I totally punched him in the face. So that's most of my memory. Those monsters, I got, I got punched in the, in the nose by Kristen Wiig hard. Hard enough that I went down. I mean, I was not braced for it or expecting it. We had just gone through how we were gonna be faking it. So I was really limber and loose and I did not roll with that punch at all. I really, I just absorbed it and went down. But she sent me a nice gift basket at my hotel that night. I don't remember much about it, but it had um, some chocolates. The gift basket had chocolates. <laughs> Did you like Ghostbusters? I love Ghostbusters. Are you mad? Now, I heard that they're showing the full movie in the other panel. Are you mad about that? The full movie? I heard they're showing the full movie. What? <laughs> no, you can't tell. You, got, you don't have a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I don't want to see that. You don't want to see that? No. I don't want to see that. I want to be here right now. Okay. Is, is it or is it not true that the way you ended up on this panel, if you said, I don't know whether to go to the George Lucas Hospital <laughs> panel or the Ghostbusters Afterlife panel, you were informed that reservations were full for the Ghostbusters Afterlife panel, and then we additionally had to offer you a seat on the panel to dissuade was... you from doing standby. <laughs> this, I thought this was just the best way to get like a front row ticket to this panel. Yes, yes. <laughs> That is sad. But I will say, for clarity, I did say the worst day of my life was having to choose between the two. Sure. But I actually didn't have to choose between the two. <laughs> Y'all chose for me, and I appreciate that. And you answered the call. I did. <laughs> Zach, how you doing? Uh, I'm hearing about one fifth of the words you guys are saying. <laughs> Seemed like Chris had fun on that movie. Yeah, he got punched. He got punched in the I face. I saw that yeah. part, yeah. <laughs> George is hanging out. What, George, what are these? We have a lot of, we have a lot of giveaways tonight, guys. Any Chris, please? I'm just gonna give stuff away for the while while you guys talk. <laughs> here in the house. Is there another Aaron Holtzman here in the house? Over there, I think I saw one, right? Yeah, there we go. Do we have any girl gizmos in the house? <laughs> no. no uh, we have one guy wearing a shirt. Right? The illegal shirt. I heard that 500 people showed up in Bro Gizmo cosplay and Warner Brothers legal department murdered them. <laughs> Like, like hands on, like they, they choked them to death. Like their hands around the neck. Watch the life escape their eyes. We made an example of them. Yeah. yeah. How many people were here at the 2019 George Lucas Costa Concert? Yeah. All right. So, you, first of all, once again, we apologize for uh, we we Billy Dee Williams was doing house Con a few years ago, and we thought. We, he might drop by and say hello for a panel. And so to lure him, we purchased some uh, warehouse stock of his 1991 <laughs> 2% undeniable. George, is it not true your hope was that if you sprinted it in the air, that Billy Dee would physically get carried by the scent no bear style? Um, well, I have, I have good news. <laughs> For those of you who were there, and also for those of you who weren't there, I have not brought any of the uh, oh. scramble of the night. Yeah. Looks like 
might be happy this side is sad. That's interesting. Um, however, one thing, because it was, for those of you who weren't there, it was uh, in, in, in an era when an airborne, uh, uh, airborne comedy was a, a bigger thing back then. <laughs> Sending funny particles out into the air. Yeah, beautiful abandon. It was a hilarious chemical attack. It would have been a good test for the microclimate. Well, I, I did notice I walked past the uh, popcorn area of the main floor. It doesn't keep out odors. Not in such um, I do have, I believe, ten roll-on deodorants. <laughs> And guess what? We're all going to this side of the room. <laughs> Hey Patrick, hey Wano, hey everybody. John Milheiser here from Paul Feig's 2016 Ghostbusters, little swag here, where I played Higgins student. Uh, you can see me here in this clip right there. There I am. I was also, excitedly enough, the seventh name in the ending credits of the movie. It was a great experience. Paul Feig is a wonderful, nice man. Uh, some memories I have from it is that he took me out to dinner afterwards. Um, what was fun was that I got to fly to Boston without knowing what my role was. I didn't know what my part was going to be. Um, and I flew with a friend of mine, Ben Harris, who played opposite of me. That's who I was fighting in that very quick clip there. Um, so we flew to Boston together in a first class. And we were so excited, we didn't know what our part was, but we did have some drinks and we told the stewardess, we were like, hey, come here. Don't tell anybody, but uh, we're in the new Ghostbusters, so, sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, that was really fun. And we bonded and it was a great time. Uh, all the girls were fun. Um, I don't know if I was supposed to, but I hung out in the green room with them. Uh, but Kristen, you know, Kate and Leslie and Melissa were fantastic. Paul was fantastic. And I really enjoyed the movie and I'm a huge fan of it. And I keep my hat and I'm very proud of my hat. And um, yeah, go Ghostbusters 2016. <laughs> and I'm excited for the new one. Um, so thanks for asking me to participate in this little video. Uh, everybody have a great time. I miss you all so much. I Bye. Mwah. Siri. End video. <laughs> Very good. Good job gathering the supplements, Patrick. Thank you. I think you said good job gathering those supplements, Patrick? Yeah, you said good job gathering these supplements. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> Jack! Yeah? What was it like being part of the Marvel Cinematic? <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Uh, and now, I don't know if you can tell, my glasses have started to slide down my nose. <laughs> and I cannot adjust them. So now I can see even less than I can see before. My nose has started to slide up my face. <laughs> so if we could average that out, we might be in business. <laughs> but in that video, was the footage in the movie shot like from a cell phone from far away? Or is that my vision? What? Like, the footage of them fighting yeah. looked like it was like a cell phone video. <laughs> I, I, I think we were just really far away. Like, <laughs> it was far away. No, it's, very, it's a very far away shot, and I believe John shot it off of a DVR version on his TV. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it zoomed in yeah. that footage, because that's what it took for him to be visible. <laughs> George, you got, what is all this, George? <laughs> Does anyone want movies? George has a bunch of TV Now, I want to be clear. Some of these DVDs are like Red Tails or American Graffiti, but then some of them are Toy Story 2 and Taxi Driver, movies George really doesn't have much to do with. Yeah, if anything, if I had to guess, this feels like the move of someone who maybe is running out of room in their apartment. <laughs> 
trying to find a fun way to clear up space rather than something that a billionaire with a ranch would do. It's almost like someone's upgraded to Blu-ray. Yeah. Well, why am I be giving away a Blu-ray of Howard the Duck? There because Howard the Duck just was released in 4K steel. That would be my guess. George, should we take a question? I don't know what you said, but I think you're right. <laughs> George, let's take a question. Does anyone have a question? You can come up to one of those two microphones. You gotta, you gotta go up to the microphone. You can't invite. Yeah. Uh, now, to be for anyone on the panel, James will hear it the best. So <laughs> it's like, I'll relay as best I can. Yeah. <laughs> I was just wondering, being a filmmaker who has repot their past films and knowing someone who's repot their past films, if you could repot any major franchise or just any film in general, what would y'all like to repot? Did you get that, George? Not Star Wars? <laughs> no, not, you've already cut Star Wars, so an official. But I would, if I don't have one, I'd cut it again. <laughs> you never stop cutting Star Wars. <laughs> here in preparation for this panel watch the extended cut of Ghostbusters answer the call which I would argue is inarguably better than the best version of the film my, my pitch would be to make it even more extended I put everything back in the, the more Ghostbusters to answer the more calls I I would combine and analyze this and analyze that in the one movie like the Godfather shot <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'd probably uh, do like a recut of like um, one of the, I feel weird wearing the shirt, but one of the Jurassic Park, like probably like, I'd recut Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> I, I'd make it a little bit short, a little bit tighter, you know, uh, so that the, the, there's a little bit more action happening. I'd love to get a crack at Dune. <laughs> Yeah, the new the one, one coming, the one coming out that <laughs> no one has seen. <laughs> you just feel like you already know some places that could use some improvement. <laughs> Have you taken your glasses off now? No, just made it. <laughs> We got a lot of videos to get through. Yeah, we got, we got a lot of supplements. <laughs> hello, George. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Watto. This is Robin Slimer from Ghostbusters 2 and the voice of Lady Slimer from Ghostbusters Answer the Call. Saying hello to all of you at New York City Comic Con. I hope you're staying safe and having an amazing weekend. I am going to share a little something with you guys for a little fun. This is my maquette. This is made by the brilliant, wonderful people at ILM. And this is to, to design the colors to make sure that they had what they wanted. And this is Slimer in the front. And this is Slimer's bootay that is signed by Michael Gross and Mark Siegel, one of the puppeteers. And there, there will be more to come as far as signatures, I promise. But I wanted to share this with you. It is something that I, I took with me and I adore. It's one of my prized possessions I wanted to share with all of you. But I also want to say, the fans of Ghostbusters are second to none. They're amazing. And you all have supported me from day one, and I appreciate it so much. I love you all. Um, like I said, stay safe. I so appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope to meet you all in person, maybe next year at New York Comic Con. Hey, I'd love to see you. Anyway, you guys, stay safe, love you, and have fun. Take care. Say that again. Did she think her video was playing at the panel upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. She um, I said she took that. that. Huh? She said, I took that. I took that. Yeah. <laughs> but she didn't say it was given to me. She didn't say they signed it to me. She said, this was something I took. <laughs> and she said, there's more to come. <laughs> Take from the Ghostbusters. I did forget to say, if you ask a question, come up here and I have prizes for you guys. Um, Let's do the next question. 
Oh, hello. Um, so I was going to ask why there aren't ghosts in the Star Wars series, but while standing here, I remembered that there are. <laughs> so my real question is, do you think that you could catch a force ghost with a proton pack? <laughs> No, you have to go under me. 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 Have to Proton pack couldn't catch a force ghost. I mean, maybe. I mean, it's never happened. That I know. Of. And it's not up to me anymore. You know. So even I, I, you know, probably now I said they could. They'll probably be one of those movies and they'll show they can't. Just to be lazy. Good habits. Cool. Thanks. And if you, before you ask your questions, it would help me out if you could wave your arms because my glasses are now sitting on my bottom and I cannot tell where these are coming from. So just wave your arms. Is that better? Is that good? Is that working? There we go. Yeah. Is that working? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have a question about the critically acclaimed Red Tails movie. Oh. Yes. So when you were interviewing with Jon Stewart, you said that you were the first person to ever create a action movie starring African Americans, particularly you said black people. Yeah. So how did you? I have the same question, George. So, <laughs> so how did you break down Hollywood and create the first ever action movie starring African Americans? What is the question? <laughs> oh, uh, now you can't. Hear. You said you created the first ever Hollywood film starring action movie starring black people. How did you break down those Hollywood barriers? <laughs> And create in 2012 the first ever movie starring me. Star <laughs> action movie black. starring black hair. George, you look like you're sweating <laughs> more on that. I don't know how I did it, but I did. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Who here has seen Red Tails? Everyone seen it? No. Who hasn't seen it? Who has? Hey, go see it. Go, go, go easy to screen. It's go easy to screen. Go home tonight, watch it twice. <laughs> hey, uh, Anthony Hemway, the director that, is helming uh, the new L.A. Law reboot with Blair Underwood. Here's Why? Why would you bring that up? <laughs> because it's Comic Con. We're supposed to announce exciting things. <laughs> I don't like that. Everybody applauds. Anthony Hemway, the director of Red Tails, which I think produced the first movie to star all African Americans. <laughs> Uh, and he's doing an L.A. Law spin-off starring Blair Underwood. That's great, bro. Everybody applauded when you said, I don't know how I did it, but I did it. <laughs> and that's how white people get away with saying shit. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know, but yes, yes. <laughs> Next question. With pop culture, there's a lot of expectations, and a lot of expectations aren't really met. So whether it be the rest of this year or next year, what's your most highly anticipated movie or TV show? Not Dude. Everyone's looking at me? Yeah. Alright, first of all, I don't, I don't understand what you mean about expectations not being met. I don't know how to that. Um, but I think in the abstract, I understand what you mean. Uh, the thing I'm most excited about, and I think we might as well make some news here, uh, at some point in the next 12 months, Disney Plus is going to release Star Wars Detours. The last Star Wars show. We announced this two years ago. It didn't happen, but I really think it's going to happen this year. If there are any journalists, uh, feel free to run with it. George Lucas says they're going to release Star Disney Plus this year. It's a, it, for those of you who don't know, it's the last Star Wars project that I personally worked on. It's Star Wars, but funny. <laughs> Silly Star Wars is basically the, that's the log line. You should have 
have called it Silly Star Wars. Yeah, Silly Star Wars. I mean, they can call it what they want. Just like click the button and release it, you know? <laughs> they got 39 episodes of it, and they're just sitting on a shelf in the Disney vault. My most anticipated upcoming piece of pop culture is the L.A. Law reboot, <laughs> directed by Anthony Hemingway and starring Blair Underwood. Wait, Lord, did you say the L.A. Law reboot is a spin-off of Red Tails? <laughs> I mean, in the sense that it takes place in America post-World War II, yes. <laughs> Everything that takes place in our reality post-World War II is a spin-off of Red Tails. <laughs> or a prequel. <laughs> Unless you don't believe it happened. <laughs> and I do. Why are you doing this? <laughs> Terrence, what are you looking for? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, most anticipated project that I, I, that I have something to do with. Oh, if you, um, what kind of thing will you hope to see? Okay, that I hope to see. Next, next, uh, Next year, right? It's probably like, probably one of the like, I suddenly lost, but the next movie I want to see is Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> the next movie I, all year I've been saying, November 11th, I'm gonna go see. Uh, but, ne but next year, probably like one of the Marvel something. <laughs> Zach, you gonna be in any of those? It's pretty fun to be in front. <laughs> I didn't know, I mean, we haven't asked you yet, so I was trying to. <laughs> Good time. <laughs> I got the glasses back up from the nose. <laughs> and I, it, I, I tilted the angle of the helmet now at, at, in an uncomfortable way. <laughs> the person who asked the pop culture question, come get your battle droid with blaster rifle. <laughs> Next question? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I, this is for all you guys right now. Um, I have a song I want to play. I want to know if you guys have ever heard it before. <laughs> oh no. I think we're getting lit for it. Ghostbusters answer the call, this is very real. Hi, George oh, Waddle oh, and Patrick. Oh, Did I pronounce that uh, name correctly? I don't know. I don't feel confident. Uh, thanks for doing a panel on Ghostbusters 2016. Uh, my memory from the movie, the first thing that came up was uh, I was very excited to work with uh, Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy. And uh, I remember I was doing a scene uh, with Kristen Wiig and it had gone really well and I was feeling good and I was like, should I ask her for a photo? Um, and then I was like, no, you know, own it. You're in a movie with her. You don't need a picture together. You're literally gonna be in a movie together. Um, and then that impulse sort of 
carried away and then I was like, you know what, maybe I'll just take a picture of her just sitting alone on her chair answering emails. And so I sort of did this sneaky thing with my phone where I tried to like, you know, discreetly take a photo and I didn't realize that my sound was on and it made that clicking sound and she sort of slowly looked at me and um, we never spoke about it again. And uh, I've never worked with her since, so I'm sure everything's okay. Too many wontons, yeah. Too many wontons in the soup. <laughs> George, too many wontons in the soup. <laughs> let's, get the, let's get the next question over, over here. Hey, it's his turn. Oh, over here. Sorry, I forgot about Ray. That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> uh, if you could like cast yourself in like as a main character in any film, like you have to cast yourself. Like you can't just recast someone else. I'm sorry, you know. Uh, in any like really popular film, who would you cast as yourself? You have to be the main character and you have to act in them. Ooh. George. <laughs> I cast myself in any film? Yes. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola in the documentary Hearts of Darkness. <laughs> so that was my idea and Francis stole it. And, that's, and if I was that, then it means I made the movies. <laughs> uh, I would have to say, just as an actor who likes a good challenge, you know, I'm just thinking about, not ego, but what would be the richest possible role to play in all of American cinema. I would have to say, Watto in the Phantom Medicine. <laughs> I don't know. Ted Lasso? People like Ted Lasso. I don't like Ted Lasso. James? I would go with Lincoln. Do you, I would replace Daniel Day Lewis with Lincoln. <laughs> uh, Lincoln. I'm the main character in this? Yeah. Yeah. V <laughs> <Z> for Vendetta? <laughs> what do you classify as the main character? <laughs> Guy Fox? Okay. Oh. You would play Guy Fox, <laughs> the historical figure in V for Vendetta. <laughs> Kind of main character, right? No, he's wearing the presence lose over the entire film. You can't go through with that. Good answer, Zach. Good answer. Where's that, where's that guy who asked about Red Tails? That was me. Alright. <laughs> Can I just say, because a lot of y'all haven't seen it, I only recently saw Red Tails, okay? And the tra the tra I remember the trailer was like, it was like super CGI heavy, and it was like, oh, these planes are gonna look terrible. Let me tell you, it doesn't look, <laughs> it doesn't look, it's, it's different. They tricked, they tricked you, and they tricked, I'm saying, Jordan, this is no offense, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, you think it's gonna look one way, and then it look another way, that's all I'm saying. I don't want to. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> okay, uh, my question is actually for Zach. Ooh, uh, what prompted you to move on out? You wave your arms. <laughs> right here, right here. Okay. So, what exactly prompted you to move from New York to San Francisco to become a professional streamer? And how many followers do you have on your streaming platform? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> It was fun to work on. <laughs> yeah, wave your arms if you're done answering. <laughs> uh, I mean, I wish I had more information to tell you the truth. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, too high? I don't know any of the answers to that. <laughs> I don't know why I was there. I don't know how many streams there were. I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm being honest. 
make that tonight you could make canon. Just make it up. I guess. <laughs> I would be in Dune then if I'm not in Dune. And are you still doing the hot dog thing? Like, does that, do you still do that on the side, or? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and in the Doom universe, which characters enjoy eating hot dogs? In Doom, yeah, in Doom I do make hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Come get those is, big is Doom set on Earth, or is it set on Doom? <laughs> Yeah, is Doom the name of the place, or is it like sand dunes? What's the name of the place? Arrakis? Arrakis? Arrakis. Alright, cool. Did you do the line really quick, too? <laughs> huh? Did you do the line, too? From Dune? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the Rick Roll guy back up here. <laughs> if he comes up, I'll tell him to do a roll. Oh. Rick Roll, come on. Hey, uh, any of the ground you found an AirPod that fell out of my hand? <laughs> <laughs> Just look around, you see there's an AirPod on the floor, <laughs> not falling out. Well, no, Rick, old guy, you can't do everything. No, listen, 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 Hey, you're that rip roll guy, right? Do a roll! <laughs> hey, oh, 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 Let's, uh, let's play the next. Let's play the next video. I think this is this is the behind the scenes footage. I think. Oh, yeah. oh, nice, girls. <laughs> I ain't afraid, no ghosts. <laughs> I pray no ghosts. <laughs> Exclusive. George Wano and Patrick, thank you for taking some time at Comic-Con to remember Ghostbusters Answer the Call, a movie that I filmed in 2015 uh, with the great uh, Kate McKinnon, Leslie Jones, Kristen Wiig, and Melissa McCarthy, directed by uh, the wonderful Paul Feig and written by the genius screenwriter, Katie Dippold. Um, here I am uh, celebrating some of your underrated work, George, with uh, some special edition 
era um, Star Wars toys that I pulled out of the closet here at my childhood home where I'm visiting my mother for her birthday. So thank you, George, for um, the special editions. I really enjoyed them in late middle school. And uh, thank you everyone at Comic-Con for uh, fondly remembering the Ghostbusters 2016 Answer the Call. I'm Neil Casey. Goodbye. <laughs>
None of the, I don't think any of the footage is in the movie. It was a real long night. And uh, my job, my job was to uh, uh, lock down the street and stand in front of a bar that they didn't pay to uh, close down for the night. So there were people flooding in and out all night. And uh, my job was to tell them, hey, hey guys, I know, I know you're drunk, but you can't walk here. I'm really sorry. And they didn't, they didn't understand that. It was, um, it was a stressful night, you know? We worked in, it was an overnight. We worked until like 6 a.m. And uh, my name's not in the credits, so. What are you gonna do? Anyways, George, Patrick Watto, hope you guys are having fun tonight. Hope you're uh, enjoying your time in New York Comic Con. I wish I could join you, but um, hope it's fun and hope those helmets are working out well. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are having fun, you know. Oh, the button's not working. I can't breathe in here. Help me get out, uh, you know. <laughs> it's funny. I think, I think it'll be funny. Okay, all right guys, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> I forgot, I forgot I worked on it. Wow. That was good. <laughs> hey guys, uh, first, thanks for making the pandemic a little easier. You guys really came through. <laughs> and uh, my second question is, when Grayson gave the sign to the person, was that sharply or was that a ghost? It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> a great question. Well, if it was a ghost, we know what to do with it, right? <laughs> 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 All right, you're going to find me cross with these last four questions? Yeah. All right. Uh, question is for Wado. Yeah, baby! <laughs> I was wondering if you had ever thought of, uh, as a gun dealer, thinking about bartering for some of these things that George is giving away for free. Where do you think he got these things from? <laughs> these are things that even I could not get rid of. <laughs> Now come get some of this shit. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Two years ago, he gave away all the swingers on tape, and I kind of did a memo, and he sat on it the entire night and then threw it out afterwards. And uh, another thing, Wado doesn't wear pants. How does he do the do? How do I do the do? How do you have sex? Are you, does Wado be, is he asexual? What, how does he? He's Wado asexual? <laughs> well, like, oh no, what, what, because my clothes are like, like, how does he, does he flow? I think the answer is as plain as the nose on my face. <laughs> and what I mean is that I sexually penetrate people with my nose. So, does the nose go to another nose? No! Does that look out of the hair? How are you advertising? Ooh. What's this? <laughs> they said, they said, uh, uh, the third literature will be canceled unless you fill up every seat in this hall. How would you advertise it? It's full. I, I would say, I would say that. I would say, I would have said that. This isn't something that's really happening, is it right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just would have promoted it a little bit harder. I would have said, listen, this is the last chance. <laughs> I would have been very honest and straightforward about it. <laughs> also, you know what I might have done if I really wanted to get people is I would have announced something that we're going to announce right now, and only five of you are going to be satisfied immediately. Who here has a twenty dollar bill on them? <laughs> okay, so no, no. All right. Five of you might be interested in this. Let's go ahead. We have an announcement. Let's roll. Let's roll the last twelve guys. You know, this is this is big. Okay. Are you guys excited? Yeah. All right. Let's roll the last video.
Are you tired of buying classic literature in editions that just aren't special enough? The George Lucas Talk Show is proud to present George Lucas Talk Show Special Editions, beginning with Bleak House, Book One of the classic work by Charles Dickens. This new paperback will feature the first 32 chapters of the serialized Dickens novel, along with a new introduction by retired filmmaker George Lucas, as seen on the George Lucas Talk Show, and many other bonus features including brand new illustrations and a foreword by actor Stephen Tobolowsky. Bleak House, Book One, by Charles Dickens, a George Lucas Talk Show special edition, a real book that you can buy a copy of now. It is the first half of Charles Dickens' Bleak House. Uh, it's serialized. It should, it should come out well in one book. And it has illustrations and supplements, but it's mostly just Bleak House. So uh, I want to thank uh, James Stewart and Zach Cherry. Of course, I want to thank the editors for coming out. Uh, and may the force be with you, always. If something's different in your cold de sac, who should you reach out to? Ghost of Toasters. If something's atypical and it doesn't look nice, who should you reach out to? Ghost of Toasters. <laughs> I'm not scared to toast ghosts. 